I want a solid education in aerospace engineering, so I'm heading to Saudi Arabia, said no one ever. People who want an education in the sciences travel to Western nations, which is odd because Islam is the fount of all science and learning, according to Muslim apologists who are trapped in an ever-expanding bubble of delusion. When Muslim students travel to Western nations, we have the perfect opportunity to help them think critically about their religion. They're away from their families and their imams, perhaps for the first time in their entire lives. They're in an environment where freedom of speech is protected, allowing us to have amazing discussions with them. Unfortunately, instead of teaching them to think critically about Islam, we teach them that only racists and bigots would dare to think critically about Islam. Jihadist recruiters use the culture we have created to radicalize the Muslim students and send them home as terrorists. Fox News reports. Sri Lanka's suicide bombers became distant, totally crazy in years leading up to Easter massacre, siblings say. Sisters of two of the alleged Sri Lanka suicide bombers revealed Thursday that their siblings, who have been described by officials as well-educated people, became increasingly distant and totally crazy in the years leading up to the coordinated Easter Sunday massacre. Their comments come as reports emerged that one of the bombers was let go by police after being arrested earlier at some point. He told male relatives off for trimming their beards and became angry and totally crazy. Samsul Hidayah, who identified herself as the sister of suspected bomber Abdul Latif Jamil Muhammad, told the Daily Mail. So I just stopped speaking to him because it got to the point where it was getting out of hand. He became angry at male relatives for trimming their beards. Why would trimming their beards anger him? Sahil Bukhari, 5893. Narrated Ibn Umar, Allah's Messenger said, cut the mustaches and leave the beard as it is. You don't trim your beard in Islam. So, this suicide bomber's sister thought her brother had gone insane simply because he started taking Muhammad's commands seriously. Now, here in the West, when we hear that a Muslim has really started taking his prophet's words seriously, we're overjoyed because Islam is the best thing since Mr. T cereal. However, the same prophet who said, don't trim your beards, also said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And I have been made victorious with terror. And I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause, and then come back to life, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred. What happens when a young Muslim starts taking these words seriously? Sunshine and roses! In an interview published Thursday, Hidayah confirmed reports that her brother, who was in his late 20s, studied abroad in the UK and Australia before returning to Sri Lanka. But she says after coming home from down under, he was a different man. I had many arguments with him, she said. At first, he started quoting scripture, and I would say, okay, you're right. But then the conversation got deeper and deeper into religion, and I couldn't follow what he was saying any longer, she added. She couldn't follow what he was saying any longer. Makes perfect sense from an Islamic perspective, because as Muhammad insisted, women are intellectually deficient. So Abdul Latif Jamil Muhammad left Sri Lanka to study in the UK and Australia. He studied aerospace engineering in London, then headed to Melbourne, Australia for postgraduate work. When he returned to Sri Lanka, the only engineering he was interested in revolved around beards and bombs. Where was this man radicalized? In Great Britain and Australia. Instead of being shown that he shouldn't obey Muhammad's commands to wage jihad, he was shown that he should obey Muhammad's commands to wage jihad. He did obey, and now hundreds of people are dead. Here's the most amazing part. If someone had gone to this man in London and said, look, don't follow Muhammad's teachings, 
Muhammad was a false prophet. He was the most obvious false prophet in history. He had sex with a nine-year-old girl. He took the wife of his own adopted son. He used to suck on the tongues of little boys. He was constantly covered in semen. This is not someone who should be telling you how to live. If someone had told him that in London, that person would have been called a racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering bigot. If I had messaged this man on Facebook and Twitter showing him why he shouldn't believe in Muhammad, I would have been blocked by Facebook and Twitter for harassment and hate speech. We have created a culture that is every radicalizer's dream. The radicalizer doesn't have to go and wage jihad himself. His job is to convince other Muslims to obey Muhammad's commands to wage jihad. He doesn't have to hide in the mountains of Afghanistan. He can have a nice apartment next to a university. He can probably even get his apartment covered by European or American or Australian taxpayers. He has an endless supply of new recruits because Muslim students keep traveling to the West. And this work goes unchallenged because the only people who question Muhammad's teachings are racists and bigots. Muslim parents are sending their Muslim children to the West for an education, and they're getting their children back as terrorists. Anyone who tries to undermine this process is labeled an Islamophobe and is deplatformed and banned from social media. So the process will continue. One of the chief exports of the West in the 21st century is going to be Muslim terrorists. We haven't even scratched the surface of the carnage that will result from the decision of politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers to protect and promote and praise an ideology that calls for the violent subjugation of the entire world. We have cultivated the ultimate terrorist breeding ground. Have the shapers of Western culture learned anything yet? They've learned nothing whatsoever. To call them stupid would be an insult to stupid people. But as long as they send out a tweet proclaiming that their thoughts and prayers are with the victims of the latest terrorist attack, they continue resting just as comfortably in their leftist bubble of delusion as the Muslim apologists rest in their Islamic bubble of delusion. I don't know about you, but I really feel like popping some bubbles.